Attention all completionists. Did you really think that you've done absolutely everything in Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury? Spoiler alert, you haven't. Cause today, I'm going to show you a little known and pretty cool trick that may not mean much, but is a fun and new way to play the game. It requires not only major game knowledge, but also speed and strategy. I introduce you gamers to getting the highest score possible in Super Mario 3D World. Now, before you go score hunting yourself, you'll want to know the basics, right? You'll need to know every single nook and cranny of a certain level to go score hunting. I even made a cool beginner's route that I came up with for 1-1. I even learned a way to get an infinite score in one level, a trick that I will introduce later in the video. For now though, here are some basic actions that give you points. For context, the scoreboard is the 6 digit display on the top right corner of the screen right under your timer. You can view your best score when you en first enter a given level. Collecting a power-up gives you 1000 points, but uh, however, a power-up gotten from a power-up slot won't give you any points. Defeating a normal enemy gives you 200 points, or 300 if the enemy gives you a coin after defeating it. And keep in mind that points given vary based on the type of enemy. Defeating a Koopa to the point where only the shell remains gives you 400 total points, or 500 if the enemy gives you a coin after defeating it. Bouncing on an enemy consecutively gives you 200 points, then 400, then 800, then 1000, then 2000, then 4000, then 8000. The total amount is 16,400 points, or I guess extra if the enemy drops coins. But we'll come back to this technique later. Getting a checkpoint gives you 2000 points, getting a green star and or stamp gives you 4000 points, Destroying a breakable block gives you 10 points, and you can use gyro to your advantage to sort of destroy the block. Collecting a coin or 1-up gives you 100 points, and once again you can use gyro to collect the coins, and you can use that to your advantage. Are you getting all this down? Cause we are not done yet. You might know about the classic trick dating all the way back to Mario 1, where the higher you land on the flagpole, the higher score you get. But what if I told you that not only does it matter where you hit the flagpole in Super Mario 3D World, but when. Getting to the top of the flagpole gives you 10,000 points. Hitting the flagpole when the last digit of the in-game timer is 6, however, is 6,000 points extra because of the fireworks. Even if you have to wait 10 full game in-game seconds, it is better to wait than to get any other digit and not get the fireworks. One in-game second at course clear screen is 50 points. For example, if you finish the level with 400 on the top right of your screen, you will get 20,000 additional points. All this basic information is necessary for score hunting because you will need to know what is most valuable. This knowledge could also come in handy when you and your friend are competing to see whoever gets the most points at the end of the level for a cool crown that the character wears. Now that you know this basic info, it is now time for my routing for Super Bell Hill. To start it off, I would recommend playing as either, either Toad or Luigi. If you plan on using Crouch Boost, Luigi is the one to use. However, levels will be technical when matching out your score, so Crouch Boost will probably be, barely be used. So at the same time, Toad could be the way to go. Finally, keep in mind that using Gyro to collect coins or break boxes is optimal. Now to start the level. The first thing you do is make your way to the cat suit box. You can use the touch screen to hit it early. Get the cat suit, defeat the Goomba in your path, and collect the three coins. Slash this Goomba and go up this fight. If you can, try not to hit only the question block with the cat suit in it, but also the two brick blocks beside it, as they also contain a coin in them. Collect the cat suit and then land on top of this question block. Collecting this coin, make your way to the green star and then hop off the clear pipe to slash these Goombas down here. Then climb this wall here and collect all these coins. If you miss one or two, you might want to go back and get it, as this entire level is a pretty lenient cycle, depending on how fast you go. Next, go in this clear pipe to defeat these three Goombas. Next, go and collect these six invisible coins on top of the cannon pipe. Now drop down to get the checkpoint. Now climb this tree to get the power up, even if you already have it. 
Next, get these four invisible coins. And then, run to grab the bunny and get the star. Then, get these coins in the water. Next, go in this pipe. Here's where you can check your pacing. I would say the average pace is around 440. If yours is lower, don't get discouraged, just keep practicing. After you enter the pipe, go into the clear pipe to grab the coins and stamp. Once you leave the room, climb up this wall for a mega mushroom. Defeat the rabbit to get the mushroom. Then get this plus 100 second clock. Run to this cat Goomba, but then wait to collect the power up that the Goomba drops. If you have fast pacing on the bridge, you can try to get rid of as many boxes and bricks as you want to, while still going fairly fast. Just be sure to defeat the cat Goombas. Then drop down here, collect the last green star, and go in the box. Once again, you can check your pace in here. If your timer says anything less than 500, then you might want to pick the pace if you want to make the cycle. But th then again, missing the cycle only loses around 500 points, so don't stress if you keep getting less than 500 by the time you hit the box. Once you exit the box, equip a cat tube from the power-up slot. Try to get all of the coins here if you can, and then get the single coin to spawn more coins. Collect all of these coins and then go down to climb the second tree here for a power up. You are almost done. Now all you have to do is climb to the top of the flagpole when the in game time is last digit is a 6. Doing all this in good succession should give you a 476 time or if you are fast even a 486 or 496 time. This should give you a grand total of over 70,000 points. But, of course, if you found an even remotely better method, let me know down in the comments. But that is the best known way to me to get the highest score in 1-1. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Remember when I said that I found a way to get an infinite score? What does an infinite score even look like? Well, here's how you do it. If we go back to one of the methods for point scoring earlier in the video, we can see consecutive enemy bouncing. A technique that has been present in Mario games for almost 40 years. Consecutive enemy bouncing is what is used for infinite one-ups, but this is a bit different. After 8,000 points, you just get one-ups, which in this case give you no score. So what we have to do is after 8,000 points to reset the bouncing and start over again. Dozens of times. It was challenging at first because for some reason I just kept dying occasionally before I, I hit the maximum score. Which, by the way, is 9999999. One time, nerves got to me and I died right when I hit uh, 9999999. This was annoying. But I learned by repositioning yourself every five or so sets of bounces, you can get to the max score of that in a matter of minutes. So there you have it. Now you do not have an excuse to leave Super Mario 3D World just because you've done everything there is to be done. There is always a fresh way to play a game as long as you are creative. If you want to try this new score maxing method yourself, just remember the tips and tricks I taught you in this video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more great videos. With that, I'll leave you to it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.